Right, guys, good morning. Um, my name is Shaul. I uh, work for Micrographics. And uh, the topic of today is we're going to look at Revit for electrical design. Right, um, so looking at the agenda, we're just going to uh, introduce the topic and then we will uh, look at um, you know, how Revit and its industry based tools can assist us. Um, as well as linking with uh, other industry professionals. Uh, we'll look at a little bit of design on the electrical side, um, using LUX levels in particular, and then um, how to set up the systems and uh, how Revit can benefit us. Um, right, and then we'll conclude and uh, open the deck for questions. All right, so first up, um, Revit obviously has been around. Um, it has been many benefits for for uh, for the building industry, um, mainly the three D uh, visualization, parametric drawing, uh, and more. Uh, there is obviously also specific benefits uh, for electrical designers and engineers, and uh, uh, we'll cover. Uh, and, and highlight some of them in uh, in this webinar. All right. So, as you uh, as you know, Revit uh, um, is the a, a premier building information modeling authoring tool. Uh, there are others as well uh, in the industry, um, but for on the auditor side, uh, Revit is the uh, the 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 premier. And, and the, the widely used one uh, between architects, engineers, uh, structural engineers, uh, mechanical, electrical, um, uh, even the construction professionals also now link with this workflow via the cloud, uh, et cetera. Right, but uh, uh, just focusing on, on the electrical side, um, the specific tool, Revit, uh, it allows us to, to work in uh, 2D in plan or in 3D and uh, or in elevation and as we place these components uh, and change them they basically get changed in all the views. Uh, the, the significance of that is that you don't have to go back traditionally you know if you had used other software to, to go and change the section or change the elevations uh, that sort of thing. So if you uh, these objects are uh, kind of a 3D object in 3D space, and as you change them in plan, uh, they adjust all over within that project. Right. Uh, the uh, uh, as well as kind of the visuals, uh, as well as the bill of materials and all the uh, related information uh, with regards to reports, lengths, number of items, uh, that sort of thing. So if you perhaps delete uh, a DB board or a, a uh, light fitting or whatever, it then gets removed automatically from the bill of materials. All right, so everything works together because it's a database. Uh, these visuals that you see uh, on screen, um, uh, it's basically uh, just to explain a little bit further. Um, you know, you've got the 3D, you've got the elevation, you've got the plan. So uh, all of these relate to uh, a back end database. So if you do any change on the front end within each view, uh, it updates the, the database, which in turn update all the other views, including reports and bill of materials and that sort of thing. So everything works together uh, within one centralized uh, uh, parametric system. Yeah, so that's that's the main uh, benefit of of using a tool like like Revit. Right, carrying on um, with regards to the, uh, the the specific Revit tools for for electrical design, um, you have many uh, tools like cable trays, conduits, uh, obviously the light fittings. Um, you have you can add DB boards. Um, I've highlighted a couple of um, other systems here on the right. Uh, for instance, uh, you know communication or, or fire um, networking can be done with this. Uh, we've got a uh, network points, uh, physical network points on inside your building. You've got a, uh, um, a switch somewhere, and these need to be linked together. 
um, you know, uh, security systems, alarm systems. You've got your centralized, uh, uh, you know, control area, and you've got uh, uh, IR uh, or cameras that you could uh, connect to that system. Right. So lots of other uh, systems can be also done within this particular tool. Um, focusing on uh, the electrical side, basically you, you obviously have the, the switches, you've got the electrical fixtures, plug points, switches, light fittings. Um, you can also link up with uh, mechanical equipment like pumps or air handling units, that sort of thing. And uh, it all kind of connects together uh, and the tools are available uh, within Revit for us to use. All right, um, the, the object that you place also, uh, like light fittings, like uh, uh, DB boards, uh, uh, that sort of thing, uh, they have their own uh, data, metadata built into their, these components. Uh, so if you select it, you can go and change and view these uh, electrical uh, information. Um, in this little view here, we've selected the uh, uh, main distribution panel and it's got certain loads attached to it, uh, uh, driving certain uh, components. And uh, you can very easily verify and check uh, your electrical uh, uh, design and, and check if that uh, um, uh, system is, or, or that particular DV board, uh, what load carries. All right, so basically the, the tools that you draw aren't just lines, arcs, and circles representing certain things. These objects that you place are the actual components, and they carry certain uh, voltage, uh, uh, etc., amps, and 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 the, the works. All right. Uh, the yeah. So that's basically the uh, uh, the electrical based tools, and and that's certainly a benefit to other maybe two D programs where. Uh, you, you just draw, you know, lines representing wire uh, uh, from one object to another. Uh, in Revit, that wire uh, also represents the same thing, but it carries, uh, you know, uh, current, uh, how much amps, how much uh, uh, resistance, etc. It's got a length, uh, it's got uh, uh, a circuit number that it's attached to within the, the DB board circuitry, and, uh, you know, it's got additional functionality within that simple you know, line that you've drawn, or in, in Revit's terms of the wire. All right, so that's certainly a benefit using uh, a tool like Revit over other uh, specific tools. All right, um, also when placing these components, uh, you would um, uh, have benefits down the line, meaning that uh, once you've placed these components, uh, they registered on this database and uh, they seen within the bill of materials. So if you place light fittings, uh, 10 of them, 20 of them, they, they are inside this model. And you can then take that further and maybe count them and then cost them. And perhaps they uh, can be, uh, um, uh, you, you know, then costed and you've got a good idea of what uh, uh, the building or the electrical uh, component is going to cost. Uh, you can also uh, look at lengths, uh, so you can count individual items. You can look at lengths like conduits or, or wire and, uh, you know, use that to order uh, stock or to uh, cost certain um, um, you know, um, items. Uh, right, so in the, in the one uh, area here, there is a light, lighting fixture schedule. It's basically a view that you create, uh, listing all the particular light fittings and uh, there's there's a number of them and uh, there's also a costing uh, so uh, that, uh, that that you can uh, assign to each one and then it gets multiplied by the number of items all right um, the uh, uh, there's also luminance for each of these uh, so the various light fitting sets have their own uh, emittance uh, or illuminance so uh, photometrics which include illuminance or uh, wattage or volt or, or whatever the uh, uh, parameters that you would require in future. Um, and it basically these tables just lists the particular one that you require and you place it in there and uh, you can um, you know, count them up like perhaps the uh, 
the number of items are counted up. There's 400 light fittings. All right, um, same with the conduits. These are different conduits, uh, their lengths, um, how many there are, and you get totals at the bottom. All right, so these sort of things are dynamic, which means that once you change the, the conduit in your plan, section, or elevation, it updates the database, and that gets automatically added and changed in your schedules, the lengths or the number of items, and that sort of thing. All right, so there's a nice little, how do you say, benefit that you have in working with this whole 3D model is that your costing and your, your counting just uh, uh, is automated. All right. <clears throat> right, another uh, example of, of working in Revit. Um, yes, a lot of times people work in 2D. Uh, maybe you've got a 2D plan, you place your light fittings in there, you place your switches and, and whatever. But these components have heights as well, meaning that uh, uh, they, they are placed at a certain height and using this height and uh, uh, linking with other services you can very easily understand the, the project look at uh, or prevent uh, and avoiding costly clashes uh, perhaps there's ducts going through your cable trays and, and you need to uh, sort that out and if you're working in 3D you can very quickly see visually the, the, the clash there's also tools built, built into Revit where you can click a button and compare, say, all the ducts and the cable trays and see where they clash. And it'll highlight those objects uh, automatically. And uh, so if you've got a complex uh, design, that happens uh, autom automatically and you can very quickly uh, avoid these clashes. And uh, as we all know in uh, uh, you know, planning, measuring twice and, and doing uh, or cutting once, is uh, the name of the game. Right, so this allows you to do that uh, before getting on site or going on site. Right, um, and it's much easier working in 3D than uh, uh, planning the, these sort of ideas in, in, uh, in 2D. Right, so there's just a little picture of, you know, little, the, the little building that we're busy with that uh, just shows some of the ducts and the DB boards and you can see uh, if there's any uh, uh, cl clashes and uh, light fittings and, and that sort of thing. All right, just a little pretty picture. It's not, uh, not uh, there's no kind of clashes there, but uh, it just uh, shows the, the 3D side of uh, a, a particular project. All right, okay, so visualizing and avoiding clashes is, uh, and an understanding the, the design is worth gold. Right, then also, um, as we know, there's also other industry players in a project, um, and nine out of ten times the electrical engineer, uh, uh, you know, links with a architectural professional. Um, in the case of Revit, uh, most architectural professionals now know or use Revit. So what you can do is link their model that they've created uh, using you know floors, walls, doors, windows, um, and uh, pull that into your model. Uh, you can even use their light fittings that they've placed and copy it over to your model, so that you don't have to redo and 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 clean up their model and place your own things again. All right, so that saves hours of time. Um, you would just then uh, perhaps add DB boards, create the circuitry. And, and, and plan your electrical design uh, on the lighting side. Um, plug points in that, you can also, if they've placed it, you can also use those uh, components. It's basically, a, uh, we'll see in the next slide, uh, you basically copy uh, the components into your model and uh, just simply reuse it. Um, you can also uh, convert the light fitting to a light fitting that you uh, have uh, because there's slight differences between the architectural light fittings and the, the MEP light fittings, as, I, as we call it. The architectural light fitting uh, perhaps do not have connectors, so it's uh, specifically just placed as, um, as, as, as positional indicators, so the architect will just place them, and then in yours, on your side, you will take that, convert it into an MEP, 
uh, uh, or replace it with an MEP light fitting, which contains connectors so that you can connect conduits or circuitry to that uh, or wires to that particular uh, light fitting in this case. Right, but the basic idea behind this is that you can link successfully with an architectural professional and use that, his model as skeleton to build in your electrical design and place your components. Right, the benefit of that is that obviously uh, it saves you a lot of time in, in recreating the wheel. Uh, also, uh, it allows you to always have the latest uh, architectural model because if an architect has changed, done some revisions, uh, those revisions can uh, be uh, 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 coordinated on your side and the model actually changes automatically uh, on your side. Right, I'm going to just uh, carry on with the slide. Um, basically, the, uh, the uh, that I have explained is just uh, shown here at the bottom. Um, obviously, the, the architectural model, if it updates, then uh, those updates on the architectural side is is uh, coordinated and updated on your side. But also, uh, this little uh, window here allows you to you know, copy the light fittings from the architect and um, copy it over into your, your particular model. Right, and uh, obviously that increases your efficiency. Um, and uh, you can also monitor that, that copy, meaning that if the architect changes his position of the light fittings, um, it flags your side and you can then, you know, uh, follow his change or prevent it or say, right, let's discuss uh, the positioning of those light fittings because of X, Y, Z. Right, so linking with an architectural professional or even other uh, uh, consultants um, is very beneficial to, to uh, a consultant like an electrical engineer. All right. Right, talking about a uh, little bit of a design side of, in this case, lighting, um, you can set up certain, right now, certain parameters. These parameters would include uh, you know, the, the rooms of your building and each room, be it a cafeteria or an office or a, uh, a storeroom, has, a, you can set up a certain lux level requirement. Right, so maybe a cafeteria would, would, would have more uh, lighting than perhaps a storeroom. Right, that you set up uh, uh, in a little key schedule, as they call it, and you assign those lux levels to each uh, architectural room. Uh, and then uh, as you place these light lights inside these rooms, uh, each light having its own lux level uh, for instance a cafeteria needs say 500 lux uh, one light is 100 lux so you would need to place five uh, uh, light fittings to uh, satisfy that requirement now doing that within your, all your rooms you you can obviously uh, do it manually but you also have uh, ability to to create a schedule now, this schedule that you see here just lists all the names of the rooms as well as um, the. Uh, uh, all right, this is actually a, a, a like an airflow schedule, but it's um, it's basically the same idea where you have a a, a difference between what uh, uh, um, the uh, lux level is and what the lux level should be. And if there is a difference, then it flags you in red. Um, if there is uh, uh, not as much light in that uh, room. Uh, now, th this little schedule is kind of the, just a, an idea. It's actually a, an HVAC schedule, but uh, you can do exactly the same on the, on the light side, um, where you list each room, their required lux level uh, that is required. So in, in my cafeteria example, you would have, say, 500. If you have five lights in the 100 uh, lux each, that matches and it uh, unflags it. If you obviously are, are under-designed, it will give you a little red flag. 
right? Um, obviously, meaning that you need to add more lights to that particular room or space. All right, so, um, all right, so that's basically the, the idea behind uh, that uh, Lux level uh, requirement. All right, um, so if I carry on, the, uh, on the MEP system design, um, right, so basically that allows you to test your circuits as well as doing various uh, electrical based tests. Right, um, on the uh, MEP side, you can uh, set up circuits. These circuits are linked to a DB board or a panel. And if there are three phases or two phases in that, uh, or one uh, single phases, uh, especially three phases, you can balance the loads between the various circuits on that, uh, that panel. Um, and it's just one button that you press and it sorts out the uh, circuits so that the, the three phases uh, balance at the bottom. Um, some electrical engineers have told me that these, uh, uh, that one button that you press to balance the loads on a, on a panel uh, saves them hours in a day. Right, but that's just one tool. And uh, the other checks that you can do and tests is to check if there's open circuits, uh, meaning that if you have uh, not, if you wired up uh, certain objects, but you haven't attached it to a, a DB board or a panel, it will then flag you in that sense. Also, you can show disconnects whereby um, if you've got uh, light fittings or plugs or certain things that um, that aren't wired up, it will also uh, be able to, to give you that uh, 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 disconnected components. So meaning that obviously you counting all these elements and if you do not uh, uh, count them, or if you do count them and they're not connected to a circuit, there is a little bit of a disconnect between the two or three components. Right, so all these tests uh, are built in, so it allows you to very quickly uh, test your system and your design once you have uh, uh, completed that. All right, so with all these tools, we can actually uh, gather information from an architect, add our real life components, link them all together, test them, see if uh, uh, these circuits uh, over are overloaded or, or not. And then the main thing is with the lighting, we don't over design uh, lights in rooms uh, because of these lux level requirements that we can add and uh, in so doing not over designing or under designing the the uh, spaces uh, it allows us to save money on the on the design and the building running costs in future so that uh, you know the client uh, doesn't overspend on lighting and uh, in so doing you know, you, you're increasing the energy efficiency you know, of this building. And uh, again, that is a, is a hot topic these days, is to make sure that the energy efficiency uh, is not uh, or was looked at. All right. Um, okay, so thank you very much for, for uh, uh, attending. Um, I will upload this to our YouTube channel, and uh, you can... Uh, uh, have a look at that again. Uh, I see some of you have, uh, have a problem with the sound, but um, it will be uploaded uh, there as well. If you've got any questions, uh, you're welcome to type them in the chat box, and then we can have a discussion around that if you want.
right, guys, thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you for attending. I will, uh, again, as I said, I'll upload the the model or, or the uh, presentation to the to our YouTube channel, and then we can have a, you can rewatch it over there. Right, have a good day, and uh, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.